18, 19 years old, people would say like, how can you be in a band with your sibling? And I just, I don't think that we totally knew that, um, like how, first of all, I don't think that we had, we had any understanding of how complex relationships are, let alone a business relationship, you know? So it was, it's just, we've just figured it out as we went along. In the video for Closer, in the beginning, you're kind of doing karaoke. Do you guys do karaoke? What's your like, bring it home? Do it to you. Go ahead. Come on. Give us a little. What is it? Come on now. Come on, I'll play something for right you. You're, yeah. If you know what, if you, could, if you could pull something out right now, I would, but you can't. I'm like, let's make <laughs> KFC. Uh, Sarah and I really like doing Bon Jovi. Yeah, like our of course. Too, when we karaoke. This is the crowd that you want to sing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be the song, though? Sarah, Sarah does a mean um, dead or alive and um, yeah everything like wait to me it's like new Bon Jovi old Bon Jovi I don't care. I don't it's, discriminate it's, it's very it's really good structurally it's good and each section is nice and short because that's the problem with karaoke is that you pull out a song you really love and then you realize that you don't know the bridge <laughs> or you don't really know the verses and so it's like there's nothing worse than a karaoke or a karaoke bomb like that like where you just get up and you're like guys I'm gonna do this obscure water track and people are like why so stick with stick with the, what you know, Bon Jovi. Well, usually when I'm in a bar and hear karaoke, they don't sound nearly as good as you. Oh, we do not sound. We don't sound good at karaoke either. No, no, it's it's shocking actually. I think I think it's almost worth doing like an like a pretend expose on it because people are constantly like, "There's no way," and I'm like, "You just you have no idea." Can we make that happen? It's so bad. How can we make that happen? Maybe we'll do. Maybe next time we're in New York, you guys should come and yeah, do a pretend, pretend that. expose on us. Our voices are not made for those tiny little microphones and coming out of that TV stereo system. It's just, it's sort of like, you know when people make jokes about um, like film and how beautiful people yeah. look on film and then they do those little HD cameras and they like have like, like witches warts and like things. That's like what karaoke does to our voices. Like it's just like, Groovy, kind of. People are like, sit down, sit down in the front. <laughs> All right, I want to ask you about New York. You live in New York a lot. I'm sure you've been here plenty of times. I've been a couple times, yeah. What do you love to do in New York? You don't have to give us specific places. Yes, yeah, where do you hang Besides out? Besides sleep in your own bed. Tell a bit more about your personal life. <laughs> um, I actually, my, my experience in New York has been really positive because, you know, I really learned the city or um, had a, a lot of experience with the city as a, as a visitor, like as somebody who, you know, was coming with a band and whatever. And I think now that I've been living here for a couple of years, um, I do feel like I'm, I'm not like a tourist. Like I don't. That's not like I'm not. At She's the, on the big red bus. All I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't. Uh, there's five times right? I mean, you go to. It's just there's so much to learn. No, but I mostly just you know I'm just like a normal person. Like I just like I love to. Yeah, at restaurants. I feel like it's endless. Like I just I love I love to eat well, and, I, and that's probably my one frivolous luxury. Like rock stars buy fancy cars or whatever. Like I just am going broke eating in really wonderful restaurants and drinking wine with through a straw. I never have done that, just so you guys know, I would never do that. So what's left on your bucket list as far as your career? Because you guys, like you said, been around 500 years, yeah. which you look great, by the way. Thank you. But what are you still, what's still on there? I mean, Grammy nominees already, so congratulations on that. Thank you. With each record, similar to like I was saying about you know sitting down to talk about how we want to do things differently with each record to keep it fresh. There's also there is kind of a bucket list type conversation. So with Heartthrob specifically, our our big three were that we really wanted to go to some new countries, like go explore some new places. You know, there's there's this whole big wide world out there, and we've seen a lot of it. But we definitely wanted to um, pick some more kind of exotic locations um, slash vacation stops. And then you know a big thing that we really wanted is we've seen over the years. Um, as, as we've seen our band get bigger, that we really wanted to try to, you know, like I said, take a bite out of the mainstream and try to expand our audience a little bit and um, not be so afraid to do certain things. So like last year we went on 90210, which was te like terrifying slash kind of awesome slash kind of embarrassing and great all at the same time because we're so awkward. We're like, oh, but that's 90210, how's it going, everybody? But so like kind of just like push ourselves out of the box and not say no to things that feel awkward and, and uh, you know, I think the, the big one for us right now is just seeing our audience grow and try to get into bigger venues, put on a really big show and try to, you know, be, I mean, we've always kind of um, rested on this sort of like, we're, we're funny and we'll just tell stories and we have this intimate relationship with our audience and we want to try to keep that, but we also want to see what it would be like if we have big lights and, you know, we have a nice big band and, and we actually try to have songs flow into each Which other. Which in a way, we would always say, we, we, we felt, honored and grateful that we would get to play where we were playing like Coachella or festivals or whatever but yeah. instead of just being a band that 
goes to Coachella, we were like, what would it be like to try to be the headliners? Like, what would it feel like at this point in our career to say, yeah, we, we, we're friends with bands like that. So we were like, what would it be like to say, hey, we kind of want to be where Paramore is, or we want to be where the Killers are. And so we only, we know we don't get very, we're not going to get very many shots at it, because we I think that we've held back aging, you know, like probably a couple of extra years, but whatever this elixir that the label keeps giving us, I just feel like it's going to catch up, and then the, the witches' warts are going to come out, and people are going to be like, they're so scary. It's a good match with your karaoke after a while. I know, oh my god. It's also the first time in our career that I really feel like we feel really positive about. I mean, things have changed a lot. When we started out in 1999, you know, there wasn't necessarily always a lot of room for women on alternative radio, for sure. And if you were going to get played on pop radio, you had to basically be wearing a bathing suit and dancing, which you kind of still do, but you can, you can, also, you can also have a snake, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's there's definitely more variety, and I think it'll, the last couple of years we started to see alternative bands breaking on to the mainstream and pop radio. You know, you have acts like M83 and the XX and Fun and Florence and the Machine and all these different kind of alternative acts that really starting to explore different markets, and it felt really exciting for us. And so um, that was a big part of it. And also as queer artists, you know, we were, we've been embraced in this whole new way, and that really wasn't happening in 1999. So. I just feel like it's a really exciting time to be in music and it's a really exciting time to be an alternative band because I think that the average person listening to the radio right now does not want fluff. They do want some substance to their pop music and I think pop music's cool again. It's been appropriated back to like, you know, the way it was, I feel like, at least from my perspective in the 80s and 90s, where we expected our popular bands to still be of, of substance and we expected them to be good and play their instrument and I feel like that is really great and it's a great time to be a part of that. So. Well, I think